Habits and Health, episode 96. Welcome to another edition of Habits and Health. This week, my guest is Daniel Manson, who is a clinical psychologist by training, and he now leads the scientific work at Flow as the chief cl- clinical officer. And we find out well, what is Flow, how does it work, what kind of people is it for. We talk about depression, mental illness, and many other things around that sort of area as well. So that's this week's episode with Daniel Manson. If you know anyone who would get some value from some of the stuff that Daniel talks about, please do share the episode with them. Habits and Health, my guest today, Daniel Manson. How are you, Daniel? I'm all good. Thank you, Tony, for inviting me. I think this is the first time I've had a guest from Sweden, as far as I can remember. Awesome. And your whereabouts in Sweden are you? I'm based in the south of Sweden, and so next to Copenhagen in Denmark. Yeah, it's called Malmö. It's a very nice town. I've been to Gothenburg and Stockholm, but I've never been to Malmö. Yeah, Go- Gothenburg is about two and a half hours of traveling by car up north. So Malmö is in the south. And what is, is Malmö fa- famous for anything? Nathan Ibrahimovic, I would say, <laughs> the football player, one of the best in the world. And then it's just a very nice down-to-earth town. So it's a little bit like Copenhagen, but smaller. So it's very nice. It's very easy to live here, I would say. And you're the, I know you're the co-founder, but you're a clinical psychologist by China, aren't you? That's correct. So I started out in IT as a person who ran big networks and then decided at 26 that I wanted to go deeper into the to the minds of people and try to understand why we become mentally ill but also why we become very happy and uh, basically the, the basics of the human mind and therefore decided to become a psychologist and then after I practiced that for a while I decided to start flow and then as you said ran that as the CEO for about six and a half years and how was that whole experience was it did it go as you thought it would or was it quite different so starting the company it never goes according to how you believe when me and my co-founder started this journey we i remember it very clearly we sat in a room in, a, in an incubator a business incubator and we talked about what we could potentially achieve with this company and we said we're going to give this three years and then we can potentially do something else because it'll take about three years to develop the product and get it out in the market and get traction and so on. And here we are seven years later and still in the beginning of that journey, I would say we have accomplished a lot, but still in the beginning of the journey. So not really, but I'm very happy that we did it anyway. And is your thoughts on where you want to go now quite different to what your thoughts were when you originally set the company up? I would say that the basics of the company is actually still there very clearly. So we decided early on that we wanted to build a, and I'm I'm sure we will get into what we are actually building, but I can just say that we're building a treatment for depression. And from the beginning, we wanted to build a holistic treatment. So partly a stimulation of the brain and partly a behavioral training program in the form of an app. And that is the basics of the products. And that's still true. The way we deliver it is also basically the same thing as we imagined in the beginning. But of course, everything that has to do with go market and how you get paid for the device and how you deliver it to the patients and so on, that has changed quite a lot, I would say. And what was it that made you want to do this in the first place is specifically around sort of mental health? Yeah, so... I would say that the, um, my career as a clinical psychologist started out with what I said before. I was very interested and still I am very interested in trying to understand why we do certain things, because sometimes we tell others the story of why we do things. And then there is another reason hidden, maybe for others, but also for ourselves. And I wanted to understand the real reasons why we do things and why we think certain ways. So that was the the start of the career there. But the reason why I then left psychology was basically I saw a tremendous opportunity to have a bigger impact. So as a psychologist, you can maybe meet people, five to eight people per day. You're quite exhausted when you're, when you're done with that. If you put yourself into it, it's very, gives you a lot, but it's also quite draining. 
in certain ways. So if you have the ambition to, to do something for the many people, I think you need to bring technology into that uh, and the uh, opportunities that we have when it comes to apps, but also hardware in order to help as many people as possible. And that was the decision I took then. So I'm happy about that. I miss doing psychology, definitely, but I think it was the right choice for me. So well, let's dig into what is Flow and how does it work? So Flow is the company and we also call our first product Flow. So it's a treatment for what we call unipolar depression or regular depression. It's a, should we say, two component solution, two component treatment, where we combine a brain stimulation headset I will go into what that actually is with a behavioral training program in the form of this app that I mentioned. The hardware is a thing that you put on your head. It looks like, like headphones, but it has two electrodes that goes on the frontal parts of the head, mm -hmm. frontal parts of the brain. It's a non-invasive treatment, so it means that nothing goes into the head or anything like that. Just put it on the outside. We then send a very weak current, you could say it's 2.0 milliamps, so you can hardly feel it, goes into the left side of the frontal parts of the brain, and we take out the current on the right side. And the effect of this is that on the left side, you can get the neurons in the brain, these tiny things that communicate with each other in order to create everything that has to do with feelings or thoughts, our whole inner mental program, whatever you want to call it. Um, we try to activate those neurons in the left side and we try to make them less active on the right side. And this has been researched for many years and there are big trials showing that if you do it this way, you can get an effect that is roughly equivalent to the effect of an antidepressant, but with the big advantage of not having any side effects. Mm -hmm. So we take this and we then, as I said, uh, try to create a holistic treatment by adding on a behavioral training program where we teach the patients what depression is, but also how you can affect it yourself by changing things that you are very familiar with, nutrition, exercise, sleep, and meditation practices mm -hmm. in order to help them reduce depression symptoms right now, but also prevent it from coming back. So that was a long harangue of information I hope everybody got. So is this something that someone needs to do daily, weekly? How regular would they need to do this? Yeah, so the stimulation sessions, the technique is called TDCS. You do that 30 minutes per session, so that 30 minutes per day. And then depending on where you are in the program, if you're in the beginning, you do it five times per week. And then after three weeks, you move on to what we call maintenance phase. And that's two times per week. And so what kind of results do people get from doing it? It has been tested in numerous studies that I mentioned before, and these are what's called RCT studies, placebo control studies. And then you can see that it's better than placebo and it is better or roughly equivalent to a normal antidepressant at a high dosage. So that's the kind of level that you're on. It's if I'm naming a number here, about 40 to 50% get a 50% drop or more in depression if you do this for six weeks. So is it a case then people just what they buy the hardware or do they just need to use this for a few months or I mean, how does that work? So we have a, we try to give access to as many people as possible. And we know that if you buy a hardware and some people can do that and some people cannot do that. And therefore we have provided one purchase option. So you can buy the equipment that's 399 pounds. And then you can also rent it, and that's £79 at the moment. And how long will that rental period be? So it depends on your severity of depression, whether you need the maintenance phase and so on. But we tend to recommend or, or basically see that if people choose themselves, a big majority of people use it for about six months. And then we have, of course, many patients are using it for a year, two years, and so on. But but the big majority is using it for roughly six months. And so you said, so during the actual session when someone's got this on their head, so how long did you say that session was? 30 minutes, three, 30 zero. minutes. And is that, are they sitting in a, like a meditative state or how does it actually, how is the session? So we recommend that you shouldn't do anything that may um, get the headset to fall off. 
so you shouldn't be running or anything, but otherwise you you can do home chores. You can be sitting in a chair comfortably. TV, you can do the app sessions. You can do many different things, but you shouldn't be running around. But otherwise, it's fine. And so how has the reaction been since people have started using It's quite overwhelming, to be honest. Of course, I'm kind of biased because I'm in the company. So you can read the reviews for yourself. But it's overwhelming to see the amount of people that haven't been helped by an antidepressant or they've been depressed for a very long time and tried many different things and they can suddenly go back to painting the, you have reviews saying that there is color in the paintings again. I can go to the gym. I can hang out with my children and all of these things that we want to be able to do with some kind of emotional expression. You want to seal something in connection to other people and, or things that you do in your everyday life. So it's very, it's actually overwhelming to see that it's something that I didn't see on this scale when I was myself practicing as a psychologist. It's, it's quite overwhelming actually to see the reviews. Did you initially just release this in, in Sweden and then it's gone to the international market or how did that develop? So it's a medical device, which means that when you get the medical approval in Europe, you're able to sell all over Europe. So we are available now, I think in 28 or 29 countries. So that's the whole of Europe, the UK, and Brazil also. And is there anything similar to this on the market? So the technology is widely used and you, there are other firms that are developing devices using TDCS, which by the way stands for transcranial direct current stimulation. But these devices are normally research devices or made for clinicians. So they are quite highly priced from 3,000 euros and up, and then they are used in the clinic. So you go to the doctor and then you get your treatment. And we have focused on getting this to, as I said before, as, to as many people as possible, taking something that works in the clinic and delivering it to the many people because we want that kind of impact. So there we are quite unique, I would say. And is, can you see how this might progress in the future? Is there, can it be used for other ailments as well? Yeah, that's an interesting question. And this is a big research field. So first you have the brain stimulation research field where you look at things like TMS, which is quite popular now. You go to a doctor and you get this magnetic stimulation, but you also have these ECT sessions, electroconvulsive therapy for very severely depressed patients. Works very well. It's a bit controversial because of the media picture of it, but it works very well if you look at the research. And then there is things uh, that have a lot weak currents, such as TDCS, and that we are using. And in that field of TDCS, they have seen very positive effects on anxiety, diseases, PTSD, phobias, many different things, generalized anxiety and so on. But also it's beginning to be published big studies on ADHD, certain symptoms of schizophrenia, such as auditory hallucinations, for example, but also pain management. And then when you hear these things, you may say, okay, this works for everything. That sounds a little bit strange, but in a way it's not that strange because you change the positioning of the electrodes and it's just an effect on the actual neurons that you're trying to have. And that can of course be true for many parts of the brain. And if you believe that these diseases are based in the brain, which we believe and many others, then of course you can affect them. And is it a case that some people are more receptive to this than others? So that, like, for example, would it not work on some people? And that is definitely correct. That like with all treatments, antidepressants or other types of pharmaceuticals, but also TMS or ECT, for example, it only works for a certain amount of people. Who those people exactly are is a little bit more difficult to say. It's different in different disease groups, patient populations. So. For example, we know that if you, you add a certain type of pharmaceutical, uh, a benzodiazepine, for example, that used for anxiety, the effect of TDCS seems to go down a little bit. That, that's one thing. And then there are the genetic differences that could potentially affect it. But otherwise, we don't really know why it's not working. As with an antidepressant, for example, we don't really exactly know why it's not working. And you see, you mentioned it's available in most of Europe now. I just wondered if there's any difference in reaction to, because the people in different countries in Europe, the cultures are quite different. Yeah. And so have, 
Had there been some countries that have been really much more positive and, I don't know, yet really much more into it than other countries? So. Interesting question. I haven't really thought about it like that. What we can see is that we are focused quite a lot on the UK and people have been, I would say, very open to it, much more so than I, I thought in the beginning because it's, it has these connotations to send sure. electricity into the brain, of course. But people use what works and uh, we have found. So I wouldn't say that a certain country is more skeptical towards this. Uh, if I were to name any country, I would actually say Sweden, because we, have, for some reason, we are a very skeptical people. And especially, uh, there's this saying, you can't become a prophet in, in your own country or your own village. Um, and I think that's pretty true, actually. It's, it's, people are very skeptical towards new things that come from Sweden in Sweden. Uh, so if I were to name one country, it would be actually Sweden. And so is this now being, like, for example, recommended by psychologists? So how do most of your clients find out about this in the first place? We decided early on that we wanted to go directly to the patients in order to quickly get a sense of, yeah, basically how they perceive the treatment. We know that it works from the science. We know that it's safe. That has been established and otherwise we wouldn't have gotten the medical device approval. But still the other aspect of it is do patients actually like it? So we wanted to test that quickly and therefore we went out and we now have uh, X amount of thousands of people. I think it's about 8,000 now and that have been using it. In the future though, we see that the connection to a physician, psychologist or a, a doctor it is very important. And the reason for that is that most patients actually go to their doctor first when they feel that they, that they might be depressed. So it's important. So therefore in the future, we would see the, if I'm talking business now, business language, B to B to C kind of would be the bigger part of the market. But right now it's directly to, to patient. You, you mentioned about you've got your testimonials, the reviews of people who found mm. a lot of benefit from it. Have you been surprised by, has anyone sort of found benefits which they just weren't expecting? It depends on if you mean that we didn't expect it or if the patient didn't expect it. Either, either one, yeah. I think that when it comes to our assist that we are doing internally, we have a lot of data coming in and I was uh, maybe... I was mostly surprised, I would say, on the effect of the severely depressed, because normally this is a technology that's deemed as something that, that, that is mostly targeted towards mild and moderately depressed patients. But we have, what we have seen in our data is that people with quite severe depression are also getting a lot of help. And that is very encouraging, I'd say, because it's such a such an easy technology to use and it's such a inexpensive also in a way and very accessible. So that's very encouraging. For the patient, I think we have reports of people saying that they have um, they, their cognitive effects, for example, that memory function works better. People feel that they have effects on other types of diseases. For example, if they have OCD, people have reported back to us that, that has become a lot better. People sleep in a little bit different ways. So they have more interesting dreams and stuff like that. But that's more like case studies, should we say, or stories from individual patients. Is there a case of if, how much does belief play into this? So if someone is determined that this is not going to work for them and they're really skeptical, mm -hmm. will it work for them? No. That is what tests in the placebo controlled trials. So I would say that. People that are coming in in those trials, they get the information that we are now giving you this treatment. It could either be a non-treatment, a placebo, or it could be the active treatment. And then we measure the difference between those groups. So that's important from a scientific point of view. We also know other things from psychological research in general, that if you feel that the treatment is the right one for you, especially when it comes to talk therapies, I believe in CBT or I believe in psychodynamic therapy. Yeah. Then the effects of that specific therapy goes up quite dramatically, actually. You know about this. And that is, is very interesting. I would presume 
but this is a presumption that this would be true for our treatment also. So if you believe it, it becomes a little bit better. If you don't believe it, it doesn't. If someone's listening to this and they're thinking, okay, I'm interested to learn more about this, where would I just go to your website? Where, what would be the next step? Yeah, I think you should look broadly, look for the evidence. And if you're a scientifically inclined person, you should read the research reports, the clinical studies. You can definitely go to our website. We have a research section where we list many of the different trials that have been done on TDCS, comparing it to antidepressants, comparing it to TMS that I mentioned before, looking at the safety aspects of it for short term and long term. So there are many different resources at our website, but look, there are, for example, there are also podcasts and researchers specifically talking about it, trying to explain the effects and why it actually works mechanistically. I think that this popular podcaster Huberman talked about brain stimulation in general, a couple of episodes ago. He talked, I think specifically about TMS, but that could be also a very good source. Over the next few years, what further developments do you see your company making? Are there other areas that maybe you're able to go into? How do you see technology in this whole area progress? So I think that what we talked about before, that there are numerous studies showing very interesting effects in other disease types in the mental health area. I think that we are closely watching this. We are also doing our own research at a quite advanced level. So there may be... I can't say too much, but there, there may be advances when it comes to partly how we attack depression. There are different ways that you can change the way you do the stimulation for depression sufferers. But again, as I said before, we can also go to other disease types and we actually have, should we say, a hardware devices internally in the company that can do this differently. So I think that we're watching the science that comes out. We're doing our own science. And then that will lead to advancements in how we stimulate. So what is your URL, your social media? How can people find out more about this? Yeah, I think the primary source of, of information would come from the website, but then we're on some of the social media, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. If the patients decide that they want to, to buy a device, start using the device, they can also get access to our Facebook forum where we have several hundred people that are daily discussing how they got on with the treatment, what they are doing otherwise, and how they're feeling and so on, which has turned out to be a very vital part of the company where, where people are very active and talking about the treatment. Yeah, so that's a great source of knowledge. Yeah, communities always helps. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's amazing to see these discussions taking place and how many different stories there are about the treatment pathway, but also the disease history and so on. It's very empowering, I would say. And are people able to join that group before renting or purchasing the product? So normally you, you wouldn't get that invite. So we, we have quite few patients that are actually, because we're not really promoting it before they, they buy it. Right. But if someone wants access to it, that's no problem. No. And the website is flowneuroscience.com. Exactly. It's a bit long, but you can probably find it if you search for flow depression in Google, for example, or some other search engine. I always ask people about if there's a book that has really moved you for any reason. Does anything come to mind when I ask that question? Yeah, it's a very interesting question. I think from my, there are many books that have moved me deeply, but I would say that the book that I r tend to reread every year is Tuesdays with Maury. Uh, it's a quite short book, but it's about a, a professor that is about to die from a disease. Mm -hmm. And he knows about this, I think it's a year before or something like that. And then he gets contacted by one of his pupils from before. And they go on a philosophical journey. So they meet every Tuesday and talk about life and talk about what he learned and so on and what's important. And I think that always comes back to me because it's yeah the most important things in life gets very accentuated when you talk about it from a dying, in this case, man's perspective. I think that's a very good book for those who hasn't read it. I'm wondering what is it about the book that you think resonates with you so much? Why is it that you keep going back to it? What is it you're getting from the book? I think that obviously as I'm a psychologist, I'm very interested in the conversation, in the meeting with other people and authenticity in, in general. I think that the why I start my career and, and left my 
old career and I started this career is because I was almost obsessed with getting to the truth of, as I said before, why we do certain things, but also this connection when you really have like a real conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of underpinning. And in the book, they convey this in a very nice way. The conversation is real. It's emotional. You can feel the emotions between them. And then that is actually intellectually also very intriguing because it's between a, a professor, if I remember correctly, of philosophy and this student of philosophy. So it's, uh, it's a very intriguing and, and very short also. So it's very easy to, to reread and, and think about it again and the new meanings of what they said and so on. I've heard a few people recommend this book. So I think it's about time yeah. I explored it myself. So yeah, I've heard other people rave about it. Okay. Okay. I hope you will enjoy it as much as I have done through the years. Daniel, thank you for letting us know about Flow because it sounds like something that's going to be really useful for many people. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for the very thoughtful call. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Thank you. Next week is episode 97 with Luke Iorio who is the host of the On This Walk podcast, where he and his guests share their real stories and experiences on challenges, as well as what it takes to be centered, connected, fulfilled and balanced. And so we talk a lot about what does that mean and, and what does balanced mean to, to look? Because I don't think it's the same as what many other people often express when they talk about being balanced. Um, he used to be the president of and CEO of IPEC, the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching. So we also discussed that and about coaching in general. And so that's next week's episode 97 with Luke Iorio. Hope you enjoyed this week's show with Daniel. If you know anyone who could really benefit, maybe anyone you know who's got depression, it could well be worth their while trying out this device. It's, um, I mean, it's not that much to, to rent, you know, it's just as, as a first call, maybe just to give it a, a, give it a go, see if it works for you or for anyone you know who does suffer from depression and hope you have a fantastic week.